I'm Simon Gotch, uh, professional wrestler, formerly with uh, WWE, uh, worked for Pro Wrestling Noah, currently engaged in a blood feud with one Josh Alexander in TNA Wrestling, and uh, sitting here in Brooklyn, New York, talking to these two gentlemen about the PWI 500, I believe was the subject. So you were talking, uh, when we were all talking about the 500 list, you had said something that uh, you feel like it's, uh, uh, meaningless probably isn't the correct term, right? But uh, what is your feeling about the list itself? So the first time I was in the PWI 500, I believe was 2002, no, I'm sorry, it's 2003, that's what it was. 2003 was the first time because I started training in 2001, I had my first match in 2002, and then I had, I was in the PWI 500 for the first time in 2003. And the first time it happened, it was really cool. My mom and my older brother went out and bought the magazine so they'd have it. And, you know, it had the whole, like, APW, you know, da 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 I was, I was called Psycho Seth back then. I hated the, the name. I really despised it. Um, and it was really cool the first time. But what winds up happening is after the first time, um, it really does lose its value to you emotionally. And it becomes this thing that until, unless it's, like, your top ten, it doesn't really matter because the list is, especially when you realize how arbitrary it is, First of all, it's really hard to find 500 wrestlers. So a lot of guys are just going to get sort of put on the list to fill space. When I started out, if you send in your, your $35 and your bio, you were in. It didn't matter what, what else happened. It didn't, your career didn't matter. What you'd achieved didn't matter. If you were actually a wrestler, it didn't matter. You just had to have your biography filled out and then your $35 and you were in. And while there are certain people like, you know, your obvious, your Dean Malenko's, your, your, your RVD's, your guys who are in major companies that were known, there was a little thought put into the order. For the most part, it becomes arbitrary after maybe the top 25. At that point, you'll see a lot of weird, like tag teams are almost always next to each other, regardless of what the individual accomplishments are. Um, they'll usually put them a couple, a couple spaces apart just to sort of give the impression that there's real thought put into it. Um, you'll see things like one person will be on the main roster of WWE and they'll be outranked by a guy who only worked for IW Mid-South. Because for some reason, the guy in IW Mid-South who wrestled in front of 14 people, you know, 12, 12 times a year, his career was apparently more impressive than the guy who's wrestling 300 days a year for WWE somehow. But that's kind of why, what I mean when I say the list is arbitrary because by the very nature of the industry, everyone with a contract should outrank every single person without one. And then it would be a completely separate list of like independent guys at, or, or it'd, probably be, it'd probably go United States major companies, international major companies, uh, then independent guys all mixed in, right? And if we're doing that, then you realize that the thing that actually gets you that position would have nothing to do with your real accomplishments, but rather the sort of tangible ones because, well, he won 75% of his matches. Well, so what? He's, does he have a contract? No. Is he paying his bills with wrestling? No. Then does it really matter that he won 75 matches? Because those 75 matches didn't do anything for him professionally. And I think we get, it's very easy, especially when you're young, to feel impassioned about this because the iconographic or the uh, iconic nature of the PWM magazine and the 500 list, but really, I mean, it's just, it's like any ranking. If it's not based on demonstrative fact, like if we were talking about ranking for going in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, that's based on actual statistics of things they've done in baseball. With wrestling, so much of that, you know, oh, well, he was the longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champion ever. I wonder why. Anyone can be the longest reigning Tag Team Champion ever. Like, it's not a real accomplishment. So, I think the... It should neither be something that harms you, nor should it be something that em emboldens you. Um, John Waters had a statement that uh, I was very fond of where he said, read the good reviews twice, the bad reviews once, and move on. And I think this is how it should be with the PWI 500. I mean, if you were 500 in the PWI 500, and you were, yes. so what? I mean, I think it might have been Pepper Parks, actually, who said it. He said, you know what? No one remembers 499. People remember 500. And that's something that really is unique. Like you're almost better off being 500 than 499 because that's something you can always say, hey, I was, I was 500. I mean, I was 183. So what? I think. I don't know. I was probably 183 one year. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it becomes that whole idea of like, why am I putting my, deciding my personal value based on a third party? Either I'm proud of what I'm, I'm doing and it's rewarding me in the ways that I feel are valuable or it's not. And someone else appreciating it or someone else liking it or not liking it shouldn't affect how I feel about my own work. Uh, I, I've said before, you know, people don't have to like me, but I still have to do my job. You don't have to be a fan of mine. You don't have to go on the Internet and praise me. I'm not, re I'm not requesting or requiring, demanding this of anyone. But understand that if I'm booked on a show, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. I'm going to go home and I'm going to cash my check. That, that's what I'm paid to do. 
And if you're not happy about that, well, you can complain to the promoter, but I still have to do my job while I'm here. The comparison I'd made at one point about the PWI 500 is it's similar to losing your virginity. The first time is really important to you, and it's this big, fantastic thing, but the older you get and the more times you appear in the PWI 500, you realize how kind of meaningless it all is and how meaningless especially that first time was and how when you're first in the PWI 500, you're probably at your worst professionally. Whereas the final time you appear in it, you might be at your best. And it's always going to mean more to be at your best and to have people judging that work than to have people judging your worst work.